Well, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. How is everybody doing tonight? We are back. We back in the building. How are y'all doing tonight? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another, listen, another, here's another one. Is that DJ Khaled? Here's another one. Wednesday night change. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you are tuning in on tonight. Um, let me check and make sure we are live on Facebook. Welcome, y'all. How are y'all doing tonight? Yo, I want you to drop some emojis in the chat like to tell me how you're doing. I want you to drop a smiley face if you're happy. Drop a sad face if you're sad because we're going to give you some prayer after this, okay? Um, I, I want you to drop an emoji that expresses how you're feeling today, all right, on this evening. Now, we may be having some technical difficulties, but I promise you we are um, updating our internet, okay? <laughs> Come Monday, it's going to be updated. We're going to be back up, and it's not going to be skipping. We're not going to have any lagging issues, none of that. So if y'all can bear with me tonight, um, we're going to get through this, all right? So if you don't know who I am, I am Cole Pastor Duke. I get the privilege and the honor to serve at an amazing church called Risen Church, Risen Church, <laughs> alongside our lead pastor, Pastor Juan Sharp Sr., who is my biological father. So listen, it is awesome to uh, be able to exercise a gift um, uh, in the body of Christ, okay? So listen, welcome to Wednesday Night Change. If y'all um, don't know, uh, if you haven't been watching and keeping track, um, for the past seven weeks, we at week seven, okay? This is seven weeks in a row that we have been consistent. We have been stable, steady, unmoving, okay? We've been uh, intentionally focused at doing Bible study consistently and consecutively uh, for the past seven weeks now, and uh, we're going to go even beyond, okay? So I, am, I want y'all to clap it up. We've been seven. Drop some sevens in the chat. Drop some sevens in the chat. Y'all with me? Okay, I hope y'all with me, all right? So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited um, that you guys are tuning in tonight. Listen, one of the things that we understand as we dive into this topic of transformation is uh, a changed mind results in a changed life, okay? Let me say it again. A changed mind results in a changed life. If you desire your life to change, guess what you have to change? Your mind. You have to change your mind. And, um, and you want to know how I know? Y'all want to know how I know? If you read Luke, uh, the 15th chapter, if, uh, okay, so I need you to grab your Bible. So if you don't have your Bible, go get one. Go get a physical Bible, electronic Bible, whichever one. Grab you some water. Matter of fact, go ahead and get your pen and pad out. Y'all See, y'all already know the routine. I'm already going ahead of myself. I totally forgot. Here's the rules. Get a Bible, whether it's physical or electronic. Number two, get a pen and paper because you want to take notes. This is important to your life, okay? Take notes. Number three, get you something to drink. You want to be refreshed. You don't want to be thirsty and dry mouth, cotton mouth, okay? Number four, tag and share this out to somebody. Share this out to somebody. You don't know what I'm talking about, but you know where I'm going, okay? You don't know what I'm going to talk about tonight, but you know where I'm going, so share this out to somebody. Now, let's go back to our point, right? We said a changed mind results in a changed life. How do I know that? Go to Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke 15. This is a story of um, the prodigal son, what they call it the prodigal son. In verse 16, he says, and it says, and he would gladly have filled his stomach up with the paws, the things that the swine was eating, the pigs was eating, right? And he says, and no one gave him anything. It says, but when he came to himself, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's servants have bread and then has some left over, like enough to spare, and I'm here dying of hunger. And he says, you know what? I will arise and go back home to my dad, right? So this, look, look how a changed mind changed the whole trajectory of his life. Like he could have stayed there with the pigs and eat slop and whatever that might have been taste like. I don't know. I don't know. It, the mind is very powerful because he might have had lobster and bisque and I don't know, maybe some shrimp scampi on the side. I don't know. It made it taste like something, okay? But he didn't. He was like, you know what? I need to go back home. I need to go back to my dad. So, and, that, and that we said this last week, like there's not a situation a changed mind can't get you out of. 
there's not any situation that you can put yourself in that your mind can't get you out. And that is one of the things that we uh, went over for these past couple weeks. And what I want to add a little bit to that is when you allow, listen to this, when you allow the Holy Spirit access to the very thing that impacts the quality of your existence, okay, you will be able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in you, okay? So this is how this works. If you think, I've been, um, so I've been teaching my sons Philippians 4 and 13, which says what? I can do all things through Christ, okay? This, this is what I'm teaching my kids. They can do all things through Christ, according to Philippians 4 and 13, right? And a changed mind results in a changed life, but guess how it's powered? It's powered by the Holy Spirit. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. It's not wishing and hoping. That don't do it for you. That's not going to get you that changed life. So a changed mind gets you a changed life. That's true, but it's got to be powered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, not hoping, not wishing, like thinking that it's going to do positive thinking. No, no, no. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 and 8, he says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, this power in Greek, I believe is called dunamis. It's called dunamis powers. For this is the type of power that's miraculous. This is miraculous power. Like, this type of power can't be explained. It's supernatural. It's the power that heals. It's the power that raised Jesus from the grave, right? It's the power that will equip you to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the type of power. We talk about dudamus power, right? We talk about power that will allow you to over, be, uh, be a victor over sin, right? Over temptation. This is the type of power. And this type of power is accessible, to all who believe. Hmm. Now, I said a lot there. I hope, let me slow down a bit. Do y'all remember, uh, there was a, there's an old school song they used to sing back in the day. I need your power, power, Lord. Holy Ghost power, power, Lord. Power to, to live right. Power to talk right. Power to think right. I'm going to add, do to Miss Power, power, Lord. Do y'all hear me? Right. So I need y'all type, type it in the chat. We need your power. Somebody type it in the chat. We need your Holy Ghost power. Because when you think right, you can live right. And this is the thing. The Holy Ghost will give you the power to think right and renew your mind. All right? Because our lives, watch this, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. If we desire our lives to move in the way that God intended us to move, we have to value and put priority on what we are thinking about. And it takes the power of the Holy Ghost to continue to have a renewed mind. Um, so, and, I've, and we talked about this last week. We said that your mind can be your greatest weapon or your greatest weakness, right? We talked about that for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So this is why we are going to jump into the last two of the seven principles of mind maintenance, okay? Um, so if you missed last week, last week we was in Florida. We had some nice, beautiful sunshine. If y'all haven't seen that, go back to our Facebook page. It will be uploaded on YouTube very soon. You can go to our YouTube page, Risen Church, R-I-Z-E-N Church, and you will be able to see all of these teachings all on YouTube, on our YouTube page, all right? So tonight we're going to get on these last two principles, right? So we've been going through seven principles to mind maintenance, okay? This is the whole point of transformation. We're trying to uh, uh, create maintenance, right? Like you don't just buy a car and just drive that joint forever, right? It requires maintenance. <laughs> your house requires maintenance, okay? Like your teeth, the teeth, you see my teeth? It requires maintenance. It's not, nothing just happens and then you just leave it alone. No, this is not how this works. And our minds, just as all of those things need maintenance, our minds requires maintenance, okay? So one of the number one things that we talked about was the promise of God. I wrote this down, and we're going to do a quick review, and I'm going to go to the last two, and I'm going to let you go. Here it is. Number one, promises of God. The promises of God is your anchor. Listen to this. It's your anchor to the change you want to see when life gets hard. You have to hold on to the promises of God. When our minds are set on the promises of God, our faith is increased, 
If you think right, you can respond right. Okay, it's all about the response. So when we talk about, when it talks about in Psalms 30, weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Like you see his response? His response is like, yo, I know I'm crying right now. I know things are not the way that I hope they are, but joy is coming in the morning. So you, you see how he responds to that. So he reflects on the promises of God. Even though I'm crying tonight, listen, <laughs> joy is coming. Joy is coming. So that's one. Declare the promises of God. Number two, endure the process. Transformation, listen to this, requires a process. This doesn't just happen overnight. A trans, uh, I said our transformation is attached to what happens in the realm of our mind. So it requires a process. So number two, endure the process. Number three, be patient. Don't beat yourself up because you have not seen instant change in your life. When you master the spiritual discipline of patience, you master the quality of your life. Did y'all hear that what I just said? When you master the spiritual discipline of patience, you master the quality of your life because patience allows you to build on a solid foundation. Go back and read where Jesus teaches the parable of the man who built on a solid foundation and then the one who built on sand. The one who applied the word of God and the one who just heard it. <laughs> you say that? It was one that heard it and act on it, and then there's one that just heard it. So you, you, you have to build patience. It allows you to build on the solid foundation, right? Here's number three. Decl- I'm sorry. Declare the promises of God, number one. Number two, endure the process. Number three, be patient. Number four, one of the ones that I like most is passion. Develop a passion after God. Develop a passion after God. Passion is something you can't live without. Passion is something you love and desire to do. <sighs> Some things that we're passionate about that we shouldn't be doing, though. <laughs> One of my favorite scriptures. I, gotta, I know we say we, we have a lot of favorite scriptures, but I do have a lot of favorite scriptures. But this has to be in top 10, which is Psalms 42, as the deer panteth for the water. So that my soul thirsts for thee. Like, that is, like, everything. I get the concept of what David is trying to express there. And that is what we need when we're talking about a mind maintenance. We have to develop a passion after Christ. I said a passion pursuit, a passionate pursuit after Christ produces a productive life. Are y'all still with me? Are y'all are y'all still with me? Are y'all still are y'all still with me? A passionate pursuit after Christ produces a productive life. Passion is more than words; it's action. It's one thing to tell me I, I, I'm oh, I, I love my wife and I, I believe she's everything, and she like I can't tell because <laughs> it's more than words; it's action. So when I say, like, create a passion, develop a passion after Christ, I'm saying don't just say you love God. Like, live like you love God. Change some things in your life that reflect that you love God. As I, I said, you will never have a purposeful life until you develop a passion for Christ. And these are, these are so important, okay? I said God promised you total transformation, and the transformation of your mind will produce transformation in every area of your life. So we should strategically practice the process of renewing our mind. And we should do this, watch this, with a passion. Like, you got to be passionate about wanting to renew your mind. Okay? And these are the things that we're going to keep continue to go through. All right? So that was number five, right? Here he is. I'm sorry, number four. Here's number five. Number five is practice. So that's the next piece. So declare promises, endure the process, be patient. Patience, develop a, a passion, excuse me, develop a passion for God. Number five is practice. Develop, and the way that I, I, I frame this is like developing new habits, all right? So we went over three things um, last time, which was res- resist. So you want to resist any triggers that promote bad habits. You want to resist those things. If you know watching a rated R movie <laughs> is going to promote a bad habit, you might not want to watch that, okay? 
So you want to resist bad, you want to resist triggers that promote bad habits. Number two, you want to remove any bad habits from your daily routine. Just remove that completely. Number three, we replace any bad habits with new habits. So when you remove that bad habit, guess what? You're going to replace that with a new productive habit. All right? I'm going to stop watching TV between 7 and 8. All right? Don't just do nothing. Read your Bible between 7 and 8. Pray between 7 and 8. So you replace that bad habit of watching excessive Netflix series over and over and over with reading your Bible over and over and over again. All right? You see how this works? So you want to resist, you want to remove, and you want to replace. Uh, one writer said that the habits you repeat every day largely dictates and determine the quality of your progression. Whew, that's good. I like Ephesians 4 and 22. It says, throw off your old sinful nature. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this, please. L watch what he says. He says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupt by lust and deception. Instead, watch this. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Go to Ephesians 4. I need you to, somebody type it in the chat. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. This is what I'm reading. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. I want y'all to get this. He says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupt by lust and deception. Instead, let your spirit, let, let the spirit, excuse me, let the spirit, let the spirit, not positive thinking, let the spirit, not an inspirational quote, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Not saying there's nothing wrong with those things, but it's going to require the Holy Spirit to renew our thoughts, to have what I would call longevity. Motivation is only going to take you so far, but the spirit of God can take you further than anything else. I hope y'all catching this. All right, so let the spirit let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on, watch this. Take off something. Remove old habits. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Now I'm on putting on new habits. TD Jakes, um, TD Jakes said it like this. He said, "You can't be." I want y'all to catch this. You can't be who you're going to be and who you used to be at the same time. <sighs> I didn't even start my timer. Oh, Lord. I don't know. Y'all let me know when I'm, uh, when I'm getting on y'all nerves. Did y'all hear what he just said? TDJ said you can't be who you're going to be and who you used to be at the same time. Mm. This is why developing new habits is so important to mind maintenance. We have to maintain a renewed mind. All right? So seven Ps, seven principles to mind maintenance. Here's one through five. Declare the promises of God. Endure the process. Be patient. Have passion. Practice. Practice. Excuse me. Developing that new habit. Number six is what I would call perseverance. Oh, man, I left my little paper. There's a paper. Um, I had a paper. It's in the back. Um, I had a paper that showed a uh, cartoon character. But let's, let's listen. Let's dive into this. So th this is the new one for tonight. Perseverance, okay? Here's what the definition of perseverance is. It's the persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Let me read it one more time. Perseverance is the persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. That's it right there. Right? So this is, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about perseverance. We're talking about delayed gratification. Perseverance is experiencing difficulties in your life, and then you still say, you know what? Despite what I see, despite what I feel, I'm going to continue to persevere. And that is what he's saying. Now watch, now watch. T 
type in the chat Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 34. Excuse me. Chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Sorry. Romans 5, verse 3 and verse 4. Here, listen to what he says. This is what Paul says. We also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation, watch this, produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. I like how the NLT version puts it. He says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Let me just break it down a little bit. You see that? We can rejoice. Like, let's think about the mindset that it would take to rejoice when things are not going bad. How hard or difficult can that be when you have not maintained my maintenance? Ooh. When, you're, when, you're, when you feel like you're drowning, you're sinking, you're, survi- you're barely hanging on, can you rejoice in those moments? He says, when you rejoice, run, when you, you can rejoice. You can rejoice when you run into problems and trials. For we know that help, it, that they help us develop perseverance, and perseverance develops strengths of character, and that character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. This is what perseverance does. Perseverance, I wrote, is enduring when things are not in your favor. Perseverance is standing despite what you see, feel, or experience. This is what perseverance is. I believe it was Donnie McCloker that said the lyrics along these lines that said, what do you do when you've done all you can? What, when it seems like it's never enough, What do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? He said, well, you just stand. When there's nothing left to do, just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, just stand. Wow. I need y'all to put it in the chat because somebody needs to be encouraged that is going through hell right now. Keep them encouraged by typing in and keep standing. Just stand. Put it in the chat. Just stand. Just stand. Put it in the chat. Just stand. Continue. Persevere. No matter what you're facing, know that God is seeing you through this. And, and I love how Ephesians puts it in Ephesians 6. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And he says, in having done all, stand. That's what Ephesians says. Ephesians 6 and 13. Ephesians 6 and 13. When you've done all you can, keep standing. Keep standing. And, I, and, I, and, this, is, and this is what most lives look like. You see one guy is, you see some diamonds. I hope y'all can see this. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but we're going to continue. Here it is. Watch this. There's some diamonds here on this side of this picture. You have one guy at the top chucking away, shoveling away, trying to get to these diamonds, and he is persistent. But look what happens to the person that's not persistent. He was this close, this close to receiving bountiful blessings, <laughs> but he gave up in the process. Oh, man. He gave up. It was too hard. It took too long. Maybe he was scared. Maybe he felt like he was going a wrong way. Maybe he felt like he was wasting his time, and he gave up. Where this guy up here at top is constantly pushing persevering. And I wrote this down. I said the perseverance is the shovel needed to move past pain, fear, doubt, and worry to get to what God has for you. It's the shovel. Like, imagine, like, are you digging something? Like, if you're digging for gold, like, you got to keep digging. Like, moving the dirt out of your way. Uh, I hope y'all catching this. You, when you dig, you don't just leave the dirt in there, do you? You do not. You dig and move that fear. 
You dig and move the pain. You dig and move the doubt because you're constantly digging. I want somebody to put in the chat, keep digging. Like, keep digging because there's something that God has for you when you keep digging. That's perseverance. Galatians, one of my favorite scriptures, Galatians 6 and 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time. At just the right time. At just the right time. Put that in the chat. At just the right time. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Maybe I need to put that in the chat. Don't give up. Somebody put that in the chat. Somebody say, don't give up. Are y'all with me? Don't give up. Don't give up. John Maxwell said, the only guaranteed for failure is to stop trying. Don't give up, y'all. Don't throw in the towel. And I'm thinking of um, Mark 5. Let's go to Mark 5. I don't have this one typed up. Uh, Sometimes I type them up, sometimes I don't. Here it is, Mark 5. Listen to this story. I want, y'all to sh- I want y'all to listen to this story of the woman with the issue of blood and listen to her perseverance. I, w- I just want to read this real quick, and, I- and we're going to move on to the last P, and I'm going to let y'all go. Here it is. Mark 5, 24. Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. Now, I want you to picture this. It's a gang of people around. <laughs> like, this is not like them little bitty whack party. Like, this is a big, big deal. Like, it's a lot of people out here. Like, breath contact type. Like, we can smell people's breath. Like, it's close. <laughs> okay? It's a lot. Right? So, it says, Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. It says, and a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Come on. Like, she got worse. Going to doctors, paying people. Hey, does this work? Does this work? No, 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 no. She got worse. But watch this. 27 says she had heard about Jesus. I'm not leaving that alone. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd. One version says that she pressed. That means, like, she, like, uh, I got to get, I don't care. Like, yo, I heard about this man. I've got to get to Jesus. And she persevered through the crowd. Most people would have let the crowd stop him. Most people were like, ah, oh, there's too many people out here. It's hot out here. <laughs> I can hear myself, actually. Oh, it's hot out here? It's a little muggy. It's too many people out here. I'll wait till Jesus get on the other side. I'll just wait. <laughs> and most miss their blessing because they're not persevering. Now, watch this. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. The most Bible says the hem of his garment. For she thought to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And immediately the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Do y'all see the perseverance in this? Your perseverance is the key to see what you have been waiting for to manifest. That's what, that's what you have to do. You have to persevere. No matter what you face, you have to persevere. So, promises of God. Enduring the process. Being patient. Developing passion. Developing new habits, which is your practice perseverance, maintaining perseverance. Number seven, one of my favorite is praising God. Praising God. 
one of the key factors to a renewed mind is praising God. Put that in the chat. We have to praise God. Let me show you why. Because praising God is the one weapon that confuses the enemy. If you want to confuse the devil, if you want to confuse your haters, you want to confuse your enemies, praise God. Can I prove it to you? This is Bible studies, right? This is Bible study. Yes, I can. So, Second Chronicles. Go to Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. We're gonna go all the way down to the twentieth verse, and I'm just gonna read y'all this story real quick, and I'm just gonna prove it to you. Here it is. It says, early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tokyo. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen, listen to me. All you people of Judea and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and he will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. Watch this. After consulting the people, the king, this is what, listen to this. The king appointed singers to walk ahead of them in the army and singing the Lord, singing to the Lord and praises, praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. He says, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. So I'm going to assume that they're chanting this. They're singing this. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Now, you know, if we was there, we'd be like, give thanks unto the Lord. His faithfulness. <laughs> Love doors forever. Like, we would have you know, put a little, a little funk on it, okay? But they sing this song, going into battle. Now, listen what happens next. At the very moment that they begin to, that begin to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of uh, uh, Ahab, uh, Moab, and Mount Sira to start fighting against themselves. Confusion. The enemies that they were going to go fight started fighting amongst themselves. God caused the praises of the people to confuse their enemies. So how many enemies do we have? The enemy of fear, anxiety, worry, lack, FOMO, fear of missing out. Those are enemies. I dare you to give God a praise despite what you feel. And this is, here's another thing. And this is why it's important to come to church. Like, despite your feelings, like, this is why you still need to come to church. So you can praise God to shake off and confuse the enemy. Your praise is your weapon. Put that in chat, please. Somebody, somebody put that in the chat, please. My praise is my weapon. My praise is my weapon. My praise is my weapon. Psalms 34, 1 through 4. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast to the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Right? And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. You, do you see? Do, do y'all see this? This is Psalms 34. Like, it's clear. And I hope y'all, like, I hope it. And one of the things that I like most is, is the way my grandmother was. My, my grandmother would say it like this. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Like, that's, that's a praise. Like, my grandmother was raising seven kids by herself. And she still was able to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, that stirred up a praise in her despite what she just left at home. Come on. Your praise will push you from the victim mentality to a victor mindset. Your praise will release you from bondage into freedom. Come on, Paul and Silas. Y'all know, know the story of Paul and Silas, right? 
they they locked up in jail. They start singing songs. They bought, everybody just got free. Not not just like it would have been different if their cell only their cell opened, but the whole jail. Everybody got free from the praise. Come on, like yeah. Did anybody else think of this? This, this listen. This is this is amazing. I love the Holy Ghost. Your praise can unlock freedom for somebody else. Your praise can help somebody get out of bondage. Come on. Paul and Silas cell wasn't the only one that opened. So your praise can get you from a worried mind to a peaceful mind. You ever been to church and you went to church and you felt one way? There was some good praising. God fell and the anointing fell. The Holy Spirit was there. And you went back home happy, glad, peaceful. Am I the only one that, that happened to? I hope I'm not. So that's it. So I, I want y'all to understand, like, and we're going to go, we're going to dive even deeper into all seven of these. So th- like I said, I, I'm not going to stop this until God says stop with this whole transforming our minds, the renewing our minds, because I truly believe that it is in our minds that will change everything for our lives for the better. But it starts with your mind. We said the quote, the quality of your life is largely impacted by the condition of your mind. So when we put into practice these seven principles of my maintenance, we will see longevity in our lives, declaring the promises of God, enduring the process, being patient, developing a passion, creating habits, of practicing new habits, persevering, maintaining perseverance, and praising God. When we act on these seven principles, we are transforming our minds, and our minds are transforming our lives. Amen. Listen. I pray that y'all enjoy this. We got 15 minutes before we get back to uh, get into uh, our prayer line. So listen, I thank God for you. Listen, please, please, please come back next week. Um, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to do a, 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 a bullet shot uh, review. Okay, we're going to do a review of all of the lessons that we've I'm going to try to put it in one, one thing. All right, so I pray that you guys come back. Um, if you missed any of these lives, Please go to our YouTube channel, and you will see part one, part two, and part three to um, these seven principles uh, if you missed the other, other ones that we talked about. Amen? So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you that you have allowed us to come on. Thank you that you've given us the mind to want to change. Thank you that you allowed us to be even on this topic and in this particular season of our lives. And I pray, God, that you would help us continue to renew our minds, allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and transform our mind for the better. Help us to live our lives the way that you intended. And I pray that each and every person that watches these lives, that little by little, that you are changing, you are convicting, you are moving things in their life, shifting uh, their lives in a way that will please you. And I thank you on tonight. I pray nothing but the blessings and promises of God over our lives. Pray that you will continue to be with that person that needs healing in their life, healing over sickness or disease. I pray that you help them on tonight in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that you are God over everything. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, we thank God for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on tonight. Meet us back here at 7 p.m. I told y'all, we going eight for eight. We eight weeks next week. We, this is week seven. We've been consistent for seven weeks with Bible study. Meet me back here at eight o'clock. Um, if you would need prayer, please join our prayer line. Um, somebody please put the number in the chat for me, and you can, uh, we'll, we start prayer at 8 p.m., right? Within the next 10 minutes, we'll be on the prayer line. Join us on there. If you really need prayer, like you need prayer for something, you want prayer for a, a family member, and you desire their life to change, and you desire God to arrest, arrest their heart, listen, come on the prayer line. 
prayer works, okay? And I thank God for you. I pray everyone have a wonderful, wonderful evening. God bless you. Peace.